Seven. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Whoa, Andrew, look at this cool tree and all the things on it. What is this? Where'd this come from? Uh, it's a tree we made at God's Garden. God's Garden? What, what's that? Uh, it's uh, every other Sunday. We meet with all the families here at church in the Great Hall. Uh, and we basically come together, spend time together. We create stories, do crafts, sing songs. And uh, yeah, they helped make this at God's Garden. I think about a couple months ago. Oh, that, that's awesome. Uh, so you, you made it all together, huh? Yeah, so basically like all the different parts on this tree, uh, all the different kids in our group put them on there. And they're all unique and special just like the, the people in our community. Oh, community, that's awesome. You know, I might have to come to God's garden one of these Sundays. That'd be great, Georgie, you're more than welcome. And actually today we're talking about communities. We're talking about the diversity of communities. Oh, cool. Well, let's get to it then for the 11th episode of the Unnamed Kid Show. Woohoo! Let's go. Hello, it's me, Georgie, the birthday tree. Woohoo! I'm covered in lights because it's your birthday this month. Jane, Jillian, Nora, Remy, Griffin, Abigail, Lexi, and Bennett. Happy birthday! I hope it's full of light and love and wonderful, wonderful things. You're amazing! Hi family, so the theme again comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 7, the message version. Um, and it says, each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it, everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. So today we are focusing on the diversity in our communities. And an easy example to think about is how we have different parts of our body that all serve a purpose and help function our body. So for example, we've got our hands that help us move and grab things and pick things up to feed us. We've got our feet to help us run and move and exercise and keep us healthy. We have our eyes so that we can see things and our ears so we can hear. There are just so many parts of our body that help the whole body function and move. And so you can think about our communities similar to a body and the different parts of a body and how each person in our community is so different, but they all play a role in our community and help it function in some way. Today's book is about a community that comes together to protect our earth. And it's called, We Are Water Protectors, written by Carol Lindstrom. Water is the first medicine. Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's bodies as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, the winged ones, 
the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, and lakes, the earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. And that is the story, We Are Water Protectors, by Carol Lindstrom. Well, I bet you're wondering why I brought you out here today. Well, Georgie, it's a really nice day out. I just assumed you wanted to hang out outside. Okay, not that. Uh, yeah, I'm curious, why are we outside? Well, I'm glad you asked, Andrew. I had Organic Bob help me dig this hole right here, so why don't you go ahead and just step on inside of it? Step inside? Get inside the hole. Yeah, Wait, come on, get inside. About? I'll cover you up with dirt. It'll be good. Just no, get inside. Come no, on, Andrew, Georgie, please, hold on. please. What, what's going on? Why would I get inside that hole? Well, Andrew, I was looking on uh, the church website, okay. and I, it talks about cultivating community. Yeah. So I had to ask Organic Bob what that meant. Uh, and basically, it's just getting the land ready to grow stuff. Well, Georgie, that makes sense, but what does that have to do with me? Well, it's it's really fun to hang out with just you and me, you know? Yeah. But imagine if I could grow a bunch of you. Oh my gosh, we'd have so much fun! Okay, Georgie, I see what's going on. First, thank you, that's very sweet for you to think that way, but uh, unfortunately, that's not how it works. You can't just plant people and have them grow. Hmm, okay, well, if you can't cultivate community in that way, mm -hmm. How does it work, Andrew? Great question. Uh, let's start by talking about what we mean when we say community. Uh, communities aren't necessarily a group of Andrews that could be cool, also very terrifying, mm -hmm. uh, but it could be a group of people, animals, plants, uh, and they basically work together, take their unique selves or, or whatever it is, uh, to take care of each other and, and the greater whole. Whoa, Andrew, that has me thinking a lot about diversity. Like with people, you know, mm -hmm. how they have different bodies and ways of seeing the world and experiences and talents and gifts, right? And and and, and families too, different families and, and cultures and all of that coming together, that's community? You, you got it, Georgie. And another example is some communities of people. Uh, one of the things that brings them together are shared beliefs or values. Uh, it could be a group of people who care a lot about uh, creation and caring for it, whether it's clean water or clean air. Uh, another good example is here at church. We're a community of people who want to embrace who we are as beloved children of God, and we try to live our lives that way, right? And caring about love and justice and redemption. Oh, okay, that makes sense, yeah. But Andrew, how do I cultivate community if I can't grow? it in the ground, right? How do communities grow? Sure, uh, and part of it is just being who we are. Like again, take this unnamed kids show. Our community is us and uh, Kiana and Jane and Organic Bob, as well as everyone at home. The kids and families and friends who are watching and the way it cultivates is they take the things they learn about and they share it with others and it impacts their lives. Cool, so, so it reaches further and further and and spreads farther than we could even know. That's right, that's right. And it's kind of like God's creation uh, in the beginning when everything was connected, God, people, animals, plants, all of communities are connected now too. Oh, Andrew, that makes so much sense. That's really exciting. Yeah, and you know what, Georgie, why don't you go talk to Organic Bob and talk more about communities and nature? Oh, okay, let's go, woo! Hi, Organic Bob. It's good to see you again. It's been too long. Hey, Georgie, how are you? Oh, I'm good. It's uh, so Andrew was telling me about communities and said, maybe I should come talk to you as well. 
Yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of community that happens out here. Out here and especially right here too? Yeah, this tree is amazing in all the community it has. Wait, community, community, tree, community tree. Oh, ha, ha, I cracked myself up, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one, Georgie. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. So what makes this tree a part of our community? Or well, there, there's all kinds of living beings that make this tree home, Georgie. There's bugs that crawl and they lay eggs and the larva hatch and that becomes food for baby birds in the spring. Uh, there's little rodents, little squirrels that oh. live in these knot holes and just birds that live in the branches. There's just so much going on there. Wow, so it's got like different levels too, right? Yeah, yeah, you got the bark, you got the branches, you got the leaves, It's they all work together. Okay, so it's kind of like like a big home or like an apartment building almost for, for bugs and animals and, and they all live their lives together yeah. in the community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's one big happy family. One big happy family. That's super cool. Thanks, Organic Bob. Yeah, you bet. It's good to see you, Georgie. It's good to see you too. I hope we'll see you again soon. Yeah, it'll be fun. Woohoo! Oh, hey there, Lori. Andrew said I could find you back here. Uh, quick question for you. Are the bees around? Am I gonna get stung? Hi, Georgie. Thanks for meeting me here at the Colonial Beehives. You know, you don't have to be afraid. Okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Okay? I've got my smoker. And do you know what? When, when bees smell smoke, they think there's a fire. And they run back, rush back into their hive to take care of that and leave the beekeepers alone. Oh. So we're safe. Okay, wow, that's really good to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I heard getting stung really hurts. And I'm not sure why bees would want to sting a little old puppet like me. Well, actually, Georgie, bees sting when their home feels, in, they think that their home is in danger. Oh. And bees are so little, and so many of the creatures around them are so very big mm -hmm. that together they work to protect the beehive. And when a bee stings someone, it dies. So they're willing to give up their own life to protect the whole hive. Wow. I know. That's really amazing, Lori. Yeah. You know what? I'll make sure to respect bees and move really slowly around them so they don't feel threatened. Oh, Georgie, that is so great. You know, God has asked us to take care of everything that he's created. Mm -hmm. And he's put in our hearts love for all creatures, just like you and me and the bees. Wow, that's really, really cool, Lori. Hey, could you tell me all about bees so I can learn how to, to appreciate them and, and care for them too? Well, of course, Georgie. Do you know that bees are all around the world? Whoa. And there's even more than 20,000 different kinds of bees. But sadly, Georgie, the number of bees is getting smaller and smaller. And that concerns many people. Bees are very important to the ecosystem because they're pollinators. Pollo. Pollo what? Pollinators move pollen from flower to flower, which helps the plants grow fruits and grain and vegetables. All the food that we need, you and me, and all the animals need to be alive. I know. Wait, so, wait, Lori. Bees help produce the bacon that I love to eat? Yes, they do, Georgie. Oh, uh, thank you so much, bees. It's so exciting. Yeah, Lori, is there like a, a mama bee that I can thank for all my bacon? <laughs> well, not exactly, Georgie, but there is a queen bee, and her only job is to lay eggs in the hive. She can lay 20,000 eggs in one day. <gasps> Whoa, 20,000, that's a lot of eggs. Hey. Lori, what other kind of bees are out there? Well, there's also drones, and they help the queen lay the eggs. And then there are the workers. And the workers, they protect the queen, they clean the hive, they build honeycomb for new baby bees, 
and they store honey for food. You see, Georgie, everyone has a job in the hive to help the whole community be strong, healthy, and happy. Just like families and churches and other communities. Wow, I really like my community. Thanks for sharing all these wonderful facts about bees, Lori. I'm really glad you're in my community. Oh, Georgie, I'm really glad you're in my community too. Well, thanks again so much. I'm gonna buzz on out of here. We'll see you later. All right. Bzzz. Thanks for coming. Hi, family. So today we have a different way to pray. And this one is called the Imagination Prayer. And so I will be reading something and I want you to choose a comfortable position. So this can be laying down on your back with your eyes closed. This can be sitting up, hands out in front of you. You can just sit and fold your hands if you want, but whatever position feels the best for you. So close your eyes then and take a deep breath. Imagine you're walking through the woods. What do you see? In front of you, there's a big, strong tree. It looks so inviting, you run to it. You start to climb the tree. The low branches are big and inviting. As you move in deeper, you hear the rustle of the leaves. You climb higher. As you go deeper into the tree, you start to notice two squirrels are chasing each other. You hear the chirp of crickets. A caterpillar is moving next to your shoulder. You see a bird's nest and the bird flies away. You've startled her. Everywhere around you, the tree is coming to life. This is the community of the tree. You climb higher still, and as you get to the top, you notice the branches to hold you are getting thinner. It's harder to hold on. You climb up further. You're nearing the very top. You can pull your head out through the leaves at the top of the tree now, and as you do, you see the tops of all the other trees. You can look over the whole forest and to the horizon. It is beautiful. This is God's community, the whole world. As you look out, you can feel the sun warm your face. It is sunny and bright. The warmth makes you smile. The bright sun feels like God is with you. You are experiencing all of God's creation. Breathe in deep. Say hello, God. Thank God for the wonderful view of community. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs>